Very Reverend Canon Parsons, Reverend Fathers and Gentlemen, pray silence for the Reverend Father Groves who will reply to the toast. Very Reverend Canon, Reverend Fathers, Gentlemen, I want to thank Mr. Metcalf for all the kind things that he said about the school. I'm in a bit of a quandary here, wondering, frankly, uh, how you are going to receive me. Because to many of you, I know I'm unknown. Uh, to some of you here, and looking round, I see faces of boys who I taught. I don't know whether that is a surprise to some of you to know that for three years I was on the staff of the school. In fact, there seems to have been some sort of uh, destiny mapped out for me with regard to Finchley Grammar School. I won't say I resisted that destiny, but at an early age, in my early teens, when I first thought of becoming a priest, I was told to report to Father Parsons of Finchley for his instruction in religious matters. And I'm proud to say that on one of those occasions I saw the beginnings of the school, uh, a woodshed. <laughs> Later on, after I'd finished all my studies, they took quite a long time. From the age of 18, I had to do 13 years. Uh, some people who are back would have to. <laughs> and the day came when I was looking forward to my first appointment, a great day in my life. Yes, I was told to report to Finchley Grammar School. I came there, and for three years I taught uh, a number of boys whose faces I see now, sometimes whose names I've forgotten, I'm afraid. And now, not towards the end of my life, but when I presume now that I have been given my final job in life, I've been told to report to Finchley Grammar School. So, for good or ill, here I am, and I accept that destiny with a good grace and will certainly try to do my best with regard to it. I said I didn't know quite how you were going to receive me. When I heard earlier on some of our guests hardly cheered when they were called old Ignatians. I frowned. Uh, I am an old Ignatian. <laughs> but I suppose, too, even before tonight, or before I was appointed to the job here, I suppose I was an old Albanian, but nobody ever quite told me. <laughs> In fact, I, I begin to wonder what makes an old Albanian, an old boy of the school. I suppose that most of us here <laughs> are delighted at uh, the age of 18 or 19, whenever one leaves the school, uh, delighted to don the mantle of an old boy. I'm sure that that goes for every one of us in this room, including myself. There might be one exception. I can't imagine the canon relishing the name of an old boy. <laughs> It's traditional on occasions like this for the headmaster to say something about the state of the school. Well, 
uh, I thank Mr. Metcalf here for speaking on this matter because, as you know, he and Canon Parsons, of course, up till very recently, know far more about the school than I do. <laughs> so it's rather impertinent, in a sense, for me to talk about the state of the school. But nevertheless, I have an advantage that having been inside the school for three years and then outside for about 19 years and now back again, that perhaps uh, I can see the school in a different light from others. I have been, for the last 19 years, an interested spectator of the school. And one has heard at the end of a gossip line how the school was progressing. Shall I say that when I came to the school, bearing in mind what I'd heard about it, I was very pleasantly surprised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the school can be criticized, but what flourishing living thing can't? But the school is a group of people. <coughs> and I find that the members of the staff are a fine body of men, and I want to pay tribute to the canon, not only for the buildings, which are obvious, that he has put up, but also for gathering round him such a fine, loyal, talented body of men that makes my job in the future, I'm sure, uh, much easier than I otherwise thought it would be. And I do want to pay tribute to them tonight. Some of them I taught with. We were on the same staff together. I can remember sitting in the staff room as one of them. I can remember joining in their uh, grumbles, uh, helping their criticisms, which is a privilege of every staff room. Uh, I hope it goes on now. I'm sure it does. <laughs> But the school has a very romantic story to tell. That from very small beginnings, we now have some 670 boys in the school, with some 120 or so in the sixth form. I told you that it's the people that make the school. They are a great flourishing body under very good teachers. That is a tremendous omen for the future. May it continue. You'll notice that I haven't said a lot about the canon. I don't think it is my place here uh, to say uh, too much. In any case, I find it rather difficult to speak about the canon because one doesn't like at times like this quoting the obvious. Suffice it to say that the canon has just done a tremendous job, of which we all agree. Yeah. <laughs> By its fruits, you'll know it. I leave you to judge looking around what the fruits are like. And here's 200 of them. I endorse what Mr. Metcalf said about the fruits, the prowess, the positions of the old boys, but I'd like just to stress one little point here. He mentioned it already when referring to, to Mr. Rossi here. I would like to see many more old boys from our Catholic grammar schools, and particularly from Finchley, entering into public life. They can do a tremendous lot of good for the Catholic cause. 
They can do a tremendous lot of good for our schools. They can do a tremendous lot of good for Finchley Grammar School. Thank God that we have Hugh Rossi here as Vice Chairman of the Governors. He is a tremendous asset to the school and I'm proud that he is an old Albanian. <laughs> I could mention the good work done by many of the staff. For the last four or five years, there's been a tremendous work done by the Deputy Headmaster, Mr. Johnny Meskell. <laughs> there never was a more loyal Albanian, unless perhaps unless perhaps we refer to Norman Scott. <laughs> and I want to pay tribute to him tonight as chairman of the Old Boys because you know that it's his inspiration that has kept you together. It's his hard work and loyalty to the school which has made this gathering possible tonight and for that I thank him. Yeah. Before I sit down, I would like to give one little example of the help that boys, old boys of this school can be in matters concerning the church. Recently, uh, before I came here, I had reason to need a site somewhere near London for another school. And we went to a very important meeting on the site with a representative of the Middlesex County Council, with the people who own the land, uh, with a number of other high and influential people. But the important person there on whose opinion the whole thing turned was the town and country planning expert. And I went along there wondering how it, what was going to happen, what this town and country planning expert was going to say. When I got onto the site, who was the town and country planning expert but Peter Plunkett. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you who don't know Peter Plunkett, he was a boy in the school uh, in the time when I taught there, leaving in about 1943 or 44. Uh, I sidled up to Peter and in my most teacherish way I said, Peter, don't let us down this time. And thank God Peter did not let us down this time. <laughs> and the site was obtained. Well, I don't want to go on much longer. All I want to say is this, that I'm abashed at the great work the canon has done in his lifetime. If I can do half as much as he has done, I will consider that I've done a good life's work.